Hi, I'm Sarah Fry. Welcome to Patent Pod. This segment is a special on-site segment at Thaddeus Stevens as part of a special event hosted by the Patent Computer Science and STEM Initiative, inviting educators and students to participate in a day of awesome hands-on STEM and CS learning. Part of today is an opportunity to hear from those educators and students about their classes, their experiences, and their hopes and dreams in computer science and STEM. Joining me now are two wonderful educators from the uh, Lancaster Lebanon Intermediate Unit 13. I have Janice and Lori. Thank you so much for being here today and thanks for taking some time away from your students to talk to me. I gotta hear from you all. How are you incorporating computer science and STEM in, in classrooms at IU 13? Well, I will start with, um, as my role as a STEM and technology um, specialist for our special education classes at Lancaster Lebanon IU 13, it, a lot of it was hit and miss, teachers doing what they wanted to do. But since we got involved in the Code Bill Fly last year in this, um, through Patan, we are now working on a script to move forward on computer science at the IU 13. So we are looking at what programs are accessible for each of our different programs, MDS, Deaf Hard of Hearing, and we're looking to start some curriculum writing with, for our teachers yeah. starting next year. So that's kind of the start of this for us. So right now I would say that a lot of our teachers are using some of the coding tools that we have. But there's nothing formal, no formal for each program. They're just kind of choosing the programs they want to use. So engaging in that script, strategic planning model Correct. is helping kind of formalize and operationalize your Yes, efforts. that's what our goal is right now. Mm -hmm. And Janice, you've, uh, you've jumped right into this experience, right? <laughs> yeah, a couple of years ago we were um, in the Governor STEM Challenge, and so we were using micro bits and learning how to code the micro bits. Um, and then this year, well, we got into a little bit last year, I guess, and then this year with coding the drones, um, using some of the resources that IU13 has in our classroom. Can you tell us a little bit about <clears throat> your classroom and your students? So I have seven students in my class right now. Um, there's a variety of communication. We have some students who are fully deaf, um, profoundly deaf. We have students who are hard of hearing. Some talk, some use sign language, so we have a lot of communication um, going on in our classroom. Um, so using the drones, which is a more visual, <clears throat> a visual tool, it, it's really good for the students because they are visual learners and they use the visual communication. <clears throat> I want to build off of that idea of, of something, you know, that, that just hands-on visual aspect being special for your students. What have been the impacts, both in your classroom specifically, and Laura, you can speak a little bit more broadly, how have you seen um, computer science and STEM impact your students? Um, in our classroom, I've, I've noticed that when they work with um, computer science, so the coding on the computer or learning how to troubleshoot the drones or any other tools that we're using, the students really collaborate with each other, which has been a really neat thing to see. Students who maybe don't often work together or they have different communication styles, so it's harder for them to communicate sometimes. This actually brings them together because the, of how visual it is and they can, like one person is maybe better at it than another and so they can really work together. So the collaboration efforts I've really noticed. I, I would agree with that with team building. Um, a lot of our classes, students are work in isolation. They don't really work well together. And I think through bringing some of these tools into the classroom, kids are actually working in pairs, working in groups where we're formulating lessons that they have to work in pairs and groups to kind of guide them through that. But we're seeing a lot of good success. Um, I want to share experience in her classroom. We have a, a student that doesn't like to code very well, like not very well, very much, doesn't like to code very much. And um, when we started in the beginning of the year to introduce them as they built their drones and then started to fly them, when she had success, the excitement in her face was really cool to see that, like, I did this, I did that. Um, even the building, we both doubted that her class was going to be able to build those drones. And it was m very impressive of how um, we actually had Tom Esposito, our, our tag team member, come in and help us with it. So, and I think that was shocking for me. I did not think they were going to do it as well as they did, just because, I guess, the fine motor and all of the way that, remember, we, we struggled with those little screws. 
So I think that was really neat to see. Um, and even for us to see that, wow, where we thought this was gonna be really hard, it really wasn't. So that was neat for us as educators. Yeah, I do wanna give a shout out to Tom. I actually spoke with Tom and another TAC member um, a little while ago about their experiences mm -hmm. working in classrooms. And, and I know that Tom spoke so highly of collaborating with you all. So well, we'll be sure to mention that in our mm -hmm. show notes so that our audience members can, can go back and revisit and, and maybe hear from another perspective as, mm -hmm. as an intermediate unit special education person mm -hmm. from Tom Esposito's perspective. I would love you to share the story that you shared with me in that email about just what happened this week with yeah. the students. <clears throat> I, told, I gave the students a challenge to do with their drones. And um, I set it all up and I said, okay, I want you guys to work together. And at first they kind of like separated into, they were gonna work in pairs. And I said, no, you guys like work together. So they all got together and um, we're in close proximity, you know, everyone. <laughs> And then I walked away and I said, okay, go ahead. And I completely walked away and the students started really working together and they just, they were working so nicely. And I was like, wow, like, I wonder if they're understanding it. I wonder if how this is going. So I gave them a little bit of time and then I walked over and I was just like, hey, how's it going? And the one student looked at me, he said, we got this. He said, <laughs> we can work. You told us to work on our own and we're doing it. He said, Ms. Baito, you don't need to be here. <laughs> and so they really just took it and they did exactly what the challenge was. They were able to complete it on their own. And it was really cool to see because that was a group of six students working together, which was mm -hmm. harder than just if you're working in pairs. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was really neat to see them just take, take it on. And the kids who aren't always leaders, they kind of step up and be a leader. Like sometimes they kind mm -hmm. of shift roles when we start working with coding and computer science. So that was just a really neat experience. I love to hear those stories. Um, I think sometimes when we hear about computer science and STEM, especially for <clears throat> educators who are unfamiliar with what that could look like or what that means, maybe we get caught up in the idea that it's, it's difficult or it's something that we have to fit into our schedule. But hearing those connections and, and just seeing your students grow um, is so powerful. So that's just a little snapshot of, of the power that that, that brings regardless of what, what subject matter you might be teaching or how big your group of students is or what their mixed levels of interest or experience are. So I love to hear those stories. I wonder if there are other, any other moments or kind of aha moments that you've had along this journey of like, I'm, I'm amazed or wow, look at our students go. Well, just here today, um, and I don't know which staff member it was of um, if it was tan or if it's the um, bill fly code but we were doing the it's like the battleship game what's the name of that game that was here not the is battleship it, it one it's the seek? hide and seek thank yeah. you so hide and seek and you know it's the one where you have to have one communicator and then one that's, that's driving the drone the, the woman that was running that booth made a comment to your inter our interpreter to say that our group did that better than any other group and I believe it's because of the language that we have to use to our students by the saying to go left, go right, go forward, go back. So the students pick up that language because that's how they have to talk and share with each other where they were saying that they were saying, go this way, go that way. And the kid that's supposed to be driving, like, what way? Uh -huh. And that was, she said, I really was impressed on how quickly your group went through this activity than anybody else in this thing. So that was, yeah, that was my aha not realizing that the language, and I just know when I'm in the classroom, you know, the interpreters will say to me, be very specific, Lori, like if you're gonna do something on the computer, tell us exactly where you're going. Don't just say, go up. Because to, our, to our, the students, that's very hard for them to listen to, see the sign, then know where to go. So it was just, it was an aha to hear it hear from someone else actually noticing it, yeah. saying, wow, your group really explained that very, very well, more than the other groups. So that's just neat, that was yeah. a really neat thing to hear. I, and also today what happened is two students who r yeah. rarely talk to each other and one person really doesn't enjoy the, the coding and the computer science as much. They were put, I don't even know exactly how it happened, but they were put together and they were working on this and they were able to, she was helping him, he wasn't sure what to do and so she was helping him and just see, for me, like we've been working together all year, but to see those two actually work together and like be successful, that to me, that was a very much an aha for today. That's wonderful to hear. 
How has it been for you all? Uh, I don't want to make assumptions, but I, I've spoken with you both on separate occasions. You're not computer scientists. You didn't get into education to teach computer science. What has your journey in computer science and STEM been like? What, what's impacted you as educators? For me, it's just um, learning some of the basic skills. And I knew very little computer science and coding starting out. And over the last two or three years, maybe I've picked up some here and there. But I teach what I know to my students. And then they take it and run with it. They're really picking up more than, I, than I've even learned because you know, we have like code.org where they can go kind of at their own pace and they can continue. And then they transfer those skills into like doing the drones. So I give them challenges and then sometimes they do a lot more than I was even expecting because I wouldn't even do it that way. So for me, my journey has been to watch them and learn from them. Um, so it's, it's been a growing experience and it <laughs> continues to be a growing experience because the more that it's in the schools now, when they get, because I teach high school, when the little ones who are now learning code, when they get up to high school, they're going to be even more proficient mm -hmm. than I am. So. <laughs> I, but I love your positive attitude about that. that and I, I think from our time together, that's really um, been an impact for, for our team and other educators to see that you're not afraid because you know that your students might come in with more than you have. And that's a, a good thing, right? And then they learn from each other. Yeah. So they, when they help each other, that's when they're learning and when they can explain it to someone else. So when they explain it to me, I know that they're learning. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Lori, any, uh, any? My, my, my journey's a little different. I actually, <laughs> 34 years ago, was a computer science major. That's my first degree. Only lasted a semester because I thought, I'm never gonna sit behind a computer the rest of my life. This is boring. So I switched into special ed. So then come 360, here we are, and here I'm doing computer science, and I'm the lead supervisor of computer science and STEM at IU13 with our classes. So for me, it's very odd. I loved the programming piece when I was in that beginning, that be very beginning stages back 30 some years ago, but I didn't see myself doing that for a living. I wanted to be with the students. I wanted to be with an education, but here it is, turn around and I'm back in computer science. So I just find that's like kind of a, wow, like here I am, but I do love what I do. And I think that we have really grown at the IU, the support of the IU and our leadership in what they're allowing to provide to our classes is amazing. So we have come a long way in the past six or seven years of what we're doing and we have amazing teachers that I pilot things with and they take the lead on it and then we continue to move and grow. Like I said, this even having this opportunity for our class to come here has been amazing. So all this has been just a great growth for all of us. If you, uh, if you had the chance to, to give a, a tip, a strategy, a word of encouragement to other educators who might, might not see themselves being successful or might not feel comfortable trying a new STEM or computer science activity with their students, what would, you, what would you say to them? My thing would be not one tool fits everybody. So that's what I've learned as being an educator at the IU. We have some tools that work beautifully in Janice's classroom, but I would never expect them to work in another classroom. So I think teachers have to understand it's not a one size fits all. Computer science to me is so many different, it's so many different areas. So you have to find the one, you have to try. And if that doesn't work, try something different. You know, we found that in her classroom, this, this whole coding, the, the block lead, the, this seems to work for those students. But I'll tell you, I could go to two other classes and try that same thing. It may not be for them. It may be them doing more of something like an, an Ozobot that's like color code drawing or just something totally different. So I think I would encourage anyone to not just think it's a one size fits all. And oh, this didn't work, so I'm, I'm dropping computer science try other things because I look at computer science is not just coding. There's a lot more in computer science than just coding in a sense. I'm so glad to hear you say that, Lori. <laughs> you know that that's part of a, literally my job and another wearing a different hat. So maybe hearing it yeah. from another person, good to hear, right? <laughs> what about you? Um, I would say even if you're not sure about trying it, just try it. I didn't know what I was getting myself mm -hmm. in. Lori's been a great support, <laughs> and she suggests things that, hey, maybe this will work, maybe it won't. Um, you even got us into the drones because you saw, yeah. you know, we started small with the micro bits, and then um, I had to ask for some help from my brother, like, hey, can you help us mm -hmm. do this code? But then that blossomed into we did very well at the Governor's STEM Challenge, and then you saw that, 
and it kind just of stalked you. Yeah. Educa <laughs> educationally speaking, I kind of stalked you. But no, and I think you, that says uh, something, right? That you, it just came across. The video presentation that I saw of your students working in the governor's STEM competition was just rewarding for me to see them work through a problem, create a prototype, and to hear um, and, and look through their materials about them. That was the first time that they'd done that in that classroom. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I just had to, I had to meet you. I did. <laughs> and here we are. So I, I appreciate that. But to give that context that, yeah, you were kind of pulled into this. Yeah, you offered us drones. And I was like, hey, that sounds really cool. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's try it. Lori said she's willing to support us. And I said, go for it. So yeah. I didn't know what I was getting myself yeah. into. So if, if you don't know, I say, just try it. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> then, and I think that's a great, maybe a great note to end on is just try it. Your students might figure it out before you do. Just try it. Yeah. It might take a while for everybody to get on the same page or to really formalize a structure with a, a vision for computer science, but you just have to get started and you just, just try it, right? Mm -hmm. Lori, Janice, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for really modeling some awesome practices both in the classroom and in the educational community. I, I am so appreciative of your time. I want you to get back to all the fun <laughs> happening with today's event. If you are interested in learning more about the ways to engage all learners in computer science and STEM, we've got some links in our show notes. I want to thank our producer, John Ragsdale, for being on location with us here today. And to our audience, I hope you'll come back and meet me here at Patent Pod, wherever we are on location, again very soon. Thank <laughs> you.